Edward Cabrera dazzles in his return to the Marlins in what was perhaps his best ever start for the Marlins, Edward Cabrera. Braxton Garrett, though, with a dead arm. Yes, he looked like he was on his way back, but should the Marlins shut Braxton Garrett down considering the current position and the pitching talent that is currently available in the organization? Tons to get into. This is Locked on Marlins. Greetings from England and welcome to Locked On Marlins, your daily Marlins podcast. I'm your host, of course, Peter Pratt. Hit me up at Miami Marlins underscore UK. If you're listening to the pod, of course, hit subscribe, leave a review. This is your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Marlins your first listen. Hope you're joining me pregame before game two. It's the Marlins and the Giants. Are you still watching? Yes, everyone's still watching. Great to see. Don't forget, guys, there is a YouTube channel as well. Make sure you hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. It's also called Locked on Marlins. It's easy to find. Also, join us in the comments. A lot of fun, a lot of takes. I appreciate every single one of you after yesterday's episode. I think everyone felt the same, <laughs> which often isn't the case with Marlins Twitter. Um, but I think everyone was aligned on that Max Meyer news. We're going to, I get, I mean, look at the rundown here. There's so much. To get into in 30 minutes, it's nigh on impossible. We're going to try our best, though. There's, there is, I guess, further update, further clarity on the Max Meyer situation. So we got to dig into that. So that isn't even on the rundown. Neither is Braxton Garrett's dead arm. <laughs> so much, so much, so much. Skip tossed. Eddie Cabrera dazzles. The bullpen blew the game. DLC is scorching hot. It isn't even September, and Brian De La Cruz is having one of his scorches. Love to see it. Christian Bethencourt to the IL. Um, the IL for an illness. We're going to talk about that as well. Um, but he's to the IL, still hitless. Boy, oh boy, we have a jam-packed show. No doubt about it. Um, this episode, though, is sponsored by our good friends over at Monopoly Go. I admit it. I have a competitive side. You know this. And... It is a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. All right, let's start with the pitching news. We're going to get to Eddie Cabrera. Let's just round up from yesterday's uh, Max Meyer news. After I released my views, my thoughts, my comments, we get a little bit more clarity. We get some more from Skip Schumacher pregame talking about the rationale, what he's going to be doing at AAA. I think it's really interesting. By the way, for me, of all the guys that are there in that media scrum, I always look to Craig Minavini. Minavini is a stud interviewer. He asks questions really well and really directly at times. And I love it when Minavini is in the scrum. Yesterday, he asked a really critical question around Max Meyer. Is he going to be pitching in AAA? Which I think is a really good question. Skip Schumacher then elaborated in that topic area to say, yes, he will be pitching. He'll be pitching every once a week, three innings kind of stuff. So what that basically says is he's down in AAA. He's not going to be going full go in terms of like, five, six, seven innings or anything silly. It's going to be like three innings ago for Max. So it's on go slow mode at this point, seemingly. Skip Schumacher tried his best to dress it up with the questions that were likely to come of the why. what, What's the reason for Max Meyer, etc. How difficult the decision. One thing I must call out is uh, he absolutely called it out that this is Peter's plan. Peter's plan. <laughs> Skip, to me, was slightly distancing himself. Naturally, he isn't responsible for roster decisions, but he wanted to make sure that it was clear that everyone knew this is Peter's plan. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm on board with it. Of course, that's what he has to say. Um, but Peter Bendix, this is his plan. Unfortunately, with Max, they shared with him coming out of spring, this would probably be a scenario he'd face into. He wasn't expected to be in the rotation. He'd face into this. Uh, it's just the timing and it's the optics. 
the team's not performing well and Max is performing the best of the pitches. So it's just the optics of this whole situation. That's the unfortunate thing for the Marlins. If Max was pitching like a, a dud, no one would care. Problem is for the Marlins that Max is in this spot. He looks ready. And then you try to dress it up with, well, he's going to be working on his two-seamer down in, in AAA. You have to say something like this. You have to. You have to give a reason, a developmental reason, etc. The reality is it's probably more related to the dough. Nevertheless, I gave my full thoughts on Max Meyer on yesterday's episode, if you want everything. And that was an immediate reaction. Obviously, there's more information funneling through. So some of those takes can age poorly. They can age well. You know, it's up to you. But go listen to that episode if you want to get the full Pete Pratt feedback on the Max Meyer situation. But it was interesting to get the clarity. You also get a Peter Bendix written interview with Ken Rosenthal in The Athletic. Uh, I haven't read it, but I saw a, a couple of excerpts. And um, the, high, the high level on that one is tough decision. You know, we had a couple of other considerations. Could it have been Puck to the pen? Could it have been Weathers to the pen? Could it have been any of those guys at AAA? Et cetera, et cetera. There's st still strong considerations when Braxton Garrett returns something along those lines. So we get it. Max, back down for development reasons. He's going to be pitching a little bit, but not much. It's about protecting his arm, protecting injuries. And I think that's a really interesting topic. The Marlins have seen this firsthand. We've all seen it firsthand. We saw what happened last year with Yuri Perez. You try to protect him in a way that's unconventional. Start, stop, start, stop. What happens? Tommy John, your best endeavors at this point in protecting guys, they don't work. It doesn't work. It's like, you may be good at looking at spreadsheets. You may not. I don't know. Time will tell on that. But in terms of Tommy John projections, it seems a lottery. And thus, for Max Meyer at this point, you know, why not just... He's healthy now. You have the expectation, the understanding that pitchers are going to get hurt because that seems to be the situation. Just keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Why mess with it? Why potentially do more damage? Sending him down to AAA and throwing less frequently, less innings, less pressure. I don't know. Either way, like, it's a ton of excuses. They're all excuses. At the end of the day, they are all excuses because Max Meyer shouldn't be down to AAA based on his performance. They are all excuses because the Marlins want an extra year of control. That's what it comes down to. More dough. Less dough, actually. More control. Great for the club. And actually, in a, in a rebuilding club, I should be praising this. As Marlins fans, we should all be looking at this saying, this is a great move. This helps our club for longer. Of course, what I've realized and what many fans have realized this season, we all live in the present. No one signs up to be crap now and good in the future, maybe. No one does. We live in the moment. Life is too short for rebuilds. <laughs> it's too short. Who knows? And will it ever work? I don't know. Anyway, I've gone way longer on Max Meyer than I wanted to. Let me talk about Braxton Garrett because that news came out too. He threw a bullpen in Jacksonville. We're expecting maybe Braxton Garrett back this week. Next thing is Braxton Garrett reporting a dead arm after a bullpen session, not connected to the shoulder issue that he was struggling with coming into spring. So that's Braxton Garrett already dealing with a shoulder issue he's never dealt with before. Now he's got a dead arm. Boy, oh boy, this sounds to me like you need to shut Braxton Garrett down for a period. Like, there's no need to take any risks here. The season is a wash, obviously. There's no need to take any risks. You can just shut Braxy down. Or if indeed he needs surgery, get him, get it done now. Let's roll. Let's just go with Sandy Yuri and Brax. Get it all done, baby. Get it all done. Um, I'm interested to see the situation, how it evolves. Not good news for Brax, clearly. Um, the funny thing is on, uh, you know, I was talking about trade values on yesterday's episode. I'm going to really deep dive into this, uh, probably on tomorrow's episode. We'll see how it goes. Cause there's a, a UK friendly game. So 
It may be later in the week, but I really want to look at trade values of the guys. And what stood out to me was in terms of surplus right now, Braxton Garrett is down as the number two, the number two asset for the Marlins uh, by uh, Baseball Trade Values website, which is a you know a very fun website. Um, and I like their I like their surplus value piece. So Braxy, the number two in terms of uh, trade value surplus at this point, considering the years of control and the performance he's put on tape last season. Nevertheless, what are the Marlins going to do with Braxton Garrett? How are they going to manage this situation? Um, they don't really have an open spot for him in the rotation right now, albeit AJ Puck dealing with an illness that is kind of seemingly rolling through the clubhouse at this point. But if, a, if Braxton Garrett is showing signs of further injury or fatigue, then I think the Marlins should be super careful, shut him down, and then maybe we see him around the All-Star break. I don't know. We'll see. Let's hit the ads, and then I want to talk about Eddie Cabrera specifically and Skip Schumacher from yesterday's game. Both of them guys um, having uh, very, very lively outings, let's say. It was very, very lively. Eddie Cabrera, I think, with a career day, uh, and in many ways, Skip Schumacher with a career day. Uh, before we do that, it's time to let you know about our good friends over at Monopoly Go. Yes, sir. Uh, roll or oh, extend those O's on that one. All right, guys. So you've heard about them. They're already sponsoring this show. Nevertheless, you know that I have a competitive side, as you know. We all do. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over one. 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with my friends. <laughs> I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. But now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not, it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. And this episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at Game Time. Yes, sir. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. Yes, sir. And they have killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Yes, sir. And those last-minute deals, you can save up to 60% off buying last minutes for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And they've got those stunning flash deals, so you can save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. And don't forget, you've got those seat views giving you that panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. Also, the lowest price guarantee. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference. You can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. You can download the Game Time app and create an account and use the code Locked On MLB for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem the code Locked On MLB for 20 bucks off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. Game time almost ended the show, uh, but luckily not. Thanks for joining me, Peter Pratt, on Tuesday, the 16th of April. Sorry for the slight pause in the action there. Wrong button. Need a new producer. Nevertheless, Max Meyer remains down in AAA, even though Garrett has a dead arm. We'll wait to see how the Marlins play that one. Let's talk about Eddie Cabrera because yesterday's outing, I think, was, if not the best, one of the best outings of his career. Just one walk, 
Firstly, everyone just looks straight at the walks with Eddie. But six innings, one walk, 10 Ks. You can't ask for any more from any starter. And Eddie Cabrera, absolutely dazzling. Um, he's It's been up and down with Eddie for many years. But boy, oh boy, a game like this just shows you what's in the locker. There's so much in the locker with Eddie Cabrera. And it's just finding a way to unlock that on a regular basis. What's changed? I don't know. Either way, it was looking super, super sexy. And like I mentioned in the offseason, if you listened in, this guy is a potential stud. I mean, the question now is, what's the plan with Eddie Cabrera? Considering they were actively trying to move him, will that continue to be the plan? You know, what happens if he goes on and has a right tear now until the deadline? Is he moved at the deadline? We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. You know, there's there's a lot of... The Marlins can obviously pivot and go in many different directions regarding their starting pitching. But Eddie Cabrera, he is still pre-arb. He's still a pre-arb guy. You don't often trade pre-arb guys unless it is an absolute haul. And the reality is for Eddie Cabrera that there's so much risk and injury history in his in his past that, like, who's giving up a haul, whatever a haul may be? Who's giving that up for Eddie? I don't think anyone. When we started to hear trade packages with the Pirates, it sounded like, you know, another middle infielder that can't hit, an empty stick. And a pitching prospect that wasn't that good. Like, come on. No way, I'm not having that. And I've said it many times. I was not happy with that proposed package. It sounded putrid to me. Nevertheless, career day for Eddie. Let's see. Let's see what happens next time out. Let's see what happens after the time after that. Too many times we've seen with Eddie, one amazing and then a walkathon. We just, we need to see consistency. I need to see consistency. And frankly, Skip Schumacher and Peter Bendix are praying for consistent. More Peter Bendix, to be honest with you. We'll wait and see. But what a return for Eddie Cabrera and what a boost. Yes, I know the collateral damage here was Max Meyer. But Eddie Cabrera has no minor league option years. So it's like it has to be back on the roster. Uh, and based on what we've seen in, in that outing anyway, he deserves to be on the roster. The talent is obviously there. Let's talk about Skip Schumacher. He had his first tossing of the year. And boy, oh boy, this was this was a career toss, I must say. Skip was, he was beat through. He was, his, his face, his neck, his vein on his neck was fully bulging. He was absolutely livid. Livid. And He's livid because the umpires decided to shaft him, shaft the Marlins, basically. If you haven't seen the game, just to kind of speed it up in terms of what happened, there was a, a call to the pen. Tyler Rogers walked out. Manager then decided, no, actually, I wanted Duval into the game. I've called the wrong guy. Problem was, Duval wasn't warming up, wasn't ready. It wasn't ready. So. They got Duval out there, but he was then given extra time because he wasn't ready to pitch. So he was allowed a load of warm-ups, like mimicking the situation where you have like an injured pitcher. That's a different situation where you've got an injury and a guy's called out. Clearly, you have the time to get ready. You've got the warm-up pitchers and the time. You're given as much time as you need. This situation was he was going with Rogers. He then changed his mind or miscommunication or something went wrong. Nevertheless, mistake was made, corrected that mistake, but he was given extra time that he shouldn't have been allowed. Shouldn't have been allowed the time. And because of that, that next at bat, I think it was to Nick Gordon, should have started on a 1-0 count for a pitch clock violation at the very least. So Skip lost his mind on that one. Fundamentally, the umpire... The umpires gave too much leniency and decided not to follow the rules. As a manager, that is extremely frustrating. And, I, and I, there's no reason why Skip shouldn't have gone bananas. He was right. The umpires were wrong. 
Skip was tossed and the game carried on. That's just the way umpiring works, right? <laughs> Nevertheless, Skip gave it to him. The funny thing was, I think it's a really interesting, some interesting timing there where he was clearly livid at the situation. But equally, like, I just wonder if, you know, clearly with the start the Marlins have had, with the news that's come out, the way things have gone, the way the bullpen's been poor, everything that's gone on continues to rumble on. I just wonder if this was the perfect time just for Skip to have a full release. Like, everything just gush out. And this umpire rightly got it, but he didn't just get this call. He got everything that's gone on this offseason and the early start of the year. Maybe. Like, we'll wait to see. Is that, was that like a, a therapy session on the field? Was it a palate cleanser? We'll wait to see. But Skip post game spoke about it really well. He, like, he, he said the same. He said, listen, I, I shouldn't have been tossed. I didn't deserve to be tossed. Because the umpires got it wrong. Nevertheless, let's talk about the bullpen. Let's talk about Dela Cruz. And let's talk about the catching situation, which is evolving. Christian Bethencourt remains hitless, but is now on the IL with this illness that's going through the clubhouse. Before we do that, need to let you know about our good friends over at LinkedIn. Yes, sir. And are you struggling to close deals? No way we're not struggling to close any deals. B2B selling is tougher than ever. And that's why I want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high-value customers, drive higher revenue, and increase sales performance. Sales Navigator helps you target the right buyers, surface key signals, such as job changes or which accounts you should prioritize, and shows you hidden allies so you can find those buyers that are most likely to convert. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data, enabling you to unlock conversations with the people that matter. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That is linkedin.com slash locked on for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash locked on and get started. All right, guys, back here with me, Peter Pratt. I didn't manage to exit the room and return. I have sequenced perfectly to the final segment. There we go. Let's talk about the bullpen. Yesterday's game, unfortunately, the Marlins had a lead. Avicel Garcia with a his second home run. Another lefty. Avi, Avi, another home run. Two bombs on the season for Avicel Garcia. Just FYI, Ronald Acuna Jr., MVP in 2023, zero home runs. Avicel Garcia, never MVP, but... Avisel Garcia, two home runs in 2024. Unbelievable. That is baseball, baby. And But the main thing with Avi's home run, first pull side home run I've seen in a long time. They've all been oppo because primarily he looks like when he goes oppo, we can get at least singles. He can get the right type of contact. When he goes pull side, it's normally on the ground. So this is super encouraging. Super encouraging to see with Avisel Garcia. Luis Arias, by the way, he's not even on the rundown, but we have to talk about Luis Arias' hair. Luis Arias has got the braids out yesterday, and it is Williams Astadio 2.0. Maybe this saves the Marlins season going to this hairstyle. I don't know. But Luis Arias' hair yesterday was wild. It was loose. Loose. And his bat was loose. Three hits for Luis Arias. Great to see. Spoke about him yesterday, saying how his trade value is diminishing. But he's been unlucky, and the stick will come around. But his trade value is still, in some ways, diminishing. Um, the defense still isn't good, by the way. Nevertheless, the hair, I'm on hair watch. As Arias got it fixed today, is it going to be fixed? We'll wait and see. I mean, or is he just going with the Astadio all the way? Who was I talking about then? I was talking about Avicel Garcia, but I want to talk about the bullpen. The reason I was talking about the offense is because the offense gave the team another chance to win. Unfortunately, they couldn't hold that lead and they blew another one. Back-to-back -back games where they blew late innings leads. Two blowies on the bounce. Not optimal. And it's all of the high leverage guys that performed last year. Tanner Scott on Sunday. And on Monday, it was a combination of George Soriano and Andrew Nardi. The three guys you depend on in the pen that remain from last year in the high leverage spot. The leverage pen that was so good in 23. Unfortunately, has let the club down. Tanner Scott hasn't quite been as bad as the other two, but boy, oh boy, Soriano and Nadi, 
It has been a horror show. Soriano just can't throw strikes early and he can't get to his slider by all accounts. Nardi just can't throw anything, seemingly. So it's a big worry. It's a big concern. This pen, in terms of win probability added, unsurprisingly, it's a negative number and it is a negative number. I believe it is the worst in Major League Baseball by more than double. So this Marlins pen is hurting the club badly. And we've seen it. We've seen it multiple occasions. Yes, the record looks terrible, but man, this club has blown some games. You know, the the starting pitching has started to come around now. It started slow, as it can do. But the starting pitching is starting to piece together. We're even, you know, we're in a point where Max Meyer is being optioned. But the bullpen has yet to find its groove. It's yet to find the roles. There's a few passengers in there, probably. You know, if, if we're totally honest with ourselves, there's a couple of passengers in there. Right now, Soriano's a passenger. Nardi's struggling. Sixto, to be honest with you, is a, is a passenger. I don't know about Birch Smith, to be honest. I'm not fully sold on him. Like, there's quite a few question marks in this pen. It needs beefing up, which is why it was the consideration of this, this puck situation isn't helping the starter. Can he beef up the pen? But on the flip side, it's only been three starts. You've come this far. What do you do? So I think I do think that's a really interesting dilemma. If Braxton Garrett was going to be back, at least one of them would have been in the pen. You would have had to have assumed from Ryan Weathers or AJ Puck. Um, but we'll see. Either way, the pen, oh boy, is not being good. And Skip called it out as well post-game. Like it's on him to help get the guys in the right roles, whatever they may be. We have a catching change as well. Christian Bethencourt has gone to the IL um, with the illness. There seems to be this illness going through the clubhouse, which it isn't clear exactly what type of illness it is, but nevertheless, Bethancourt on the 10-day IL. You've now got Johnny Pareda, whose contract was selected from the minors. I believe he's had 11 seasons in the minor leagues, never made a major league appearance. He's now on a big league roster and he will be, you know, in a 10-day stint, he will have to make his debut. I don't believe it's today. And so it'll be probably the day game tomorrow catching not AJ Puck, but Trevor Rogers, because AJ Puck's still ill, sliding backwards through this rotation. Trevor Rogers will step up in the UK friendly Wednesday game, likely with Johnny Pareda catching him. It's all change. I mean, I think even on yesterday's episode, I didn't even have time to talk about Otto Lopez um, being recalled uh, after Jake Berger going on the 10-day IL. Burger with the oblique, that's probably a month. So, you know, Otto Lopez is going to be, you know, playing now and again. Uh, Rivera will likely be the starting third baseman now pretty much every day at this point. He was already the platoon guy, the short, the short side platoon, but really Rivera probably takes over there. And then it's like, you know, what what else can you do? I do think yesterday was interesting, though, with the lineup where <clears throat> Rivera and Lopez were in the lineup. So was Arias, but you ended up with like Arias could have easily slid over to first base, um, but he didn't, which is really interesting. And in the end, one of the other guys played out of position in some ways at first base where Bell uh, was DHing. I thought that was really interesting. They didn't move Arias. Like for me, the way things have gone at second base for Arias, that he didn't slide to first yesterday with that, you know, that there was a perfect opportunity and he didn't, which I thought was. Interesting. I'm interested to see, does Arias get a bit more time at first? Because as we've seen at second, it's been a real struggle. A real struggle. Brian De La Cruz is on another hot streak, though, by the way, guys. Another hot streak. When guys are on, De La Cruz is dangerous at this point, And he's shown it in multiple games, which is great to see with Brian De La Cruz. I do wonder with De La Cruz if it is helping him taking a little bit more time out of the field, like if that is helping him or if it's connected, I don't know. I think in spring we saw with Brian De La Cruz, he was hitting balls super hard, super early. Harder than he's ever hit balls before. So it feels like something had changed for De La Cruz in spring. And it feels like he has carried a, an element of that forward into, into the, the, the regular season, which is, again, really encouraging. Really encouraging with De La Cruz. He's definitely on a on a heater right now. Jazz Chisholm Jr. slides up in the lineup as well today, by the way. Jazz, for the first time, hitting in the two-hole. 
So right behind Reyes, um, De La Cruz hitting three and Bell hitting four. That looks more prototypical as a lineup, right? I've never understood why Jazz is in the cleanup spot. Like, doesn't really make a ton of sense. He isn't a cleanup hitter, of course. So for me, it just looks much more balanced prototypically, traditionally, however you want to think it. But Jazz in the two hole, he's on four stolen bases now. Two bombs, 40-40 track are still ticking away, guys, even though this Marlins season looks to have ticked away already. Right, you still with me? <laughs> that was a lot of news in 30 minutes, including a botched ad break. Hopefully that didn't affect your experience of this episode too greatly. Nevertheless, guys, thanks for making Lockdown Marlins your first listen of the day. The Marlins are going up against the Giants in game two this evening. Ryan Weathers gets the ball. Uh, for the Marlins. Very intrigued to see what kind of performance we get from Ryan Weathers. For me, he has been one of the standouts as well in this rotation. And But the pressure is on for Weathers because if Braxton is back soon, then it's either him or Puck seemingly are going to be the guys removed from the rotation. Let's see how he goes. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow recapping this one. Likely recapping a UK-friendly one as well. And later in the week, starting to look at baseball trade values and aligning what the website has and my view as well. Look forward to seeing you then, guys.